person that's writing this poem that's formulating these thoughts like who are they like, in order to really engage with it i have to really understand the person that's telling it fully form who the speaker is and i'm saying that and i think you know a lot of the work that i do i'm i'm doing like perspective pieces and so like you know i'm personifying this person or this you know what i mean like, like and so i think it's it's especially helpful in the in that regard but a lot of times even if you're writing from your own perspective it's like a lot of people don't have a very clear distillation of exactly who they are what feelings that they have and i'm not saying like on some uh, ethereal level i'm saying as far as like who is the the person that's writing this poem that's formulating these thoughts like who are they after you've done this work here you've already created you've written the title you've gotten your first line or even like you've written your title and now you're thinking okay to really engage with this uh, story that I'm telling, you know, or like as in, in order to really engage with it, I have to really understand the person that's telling it. If you're doing like a persona piece for the piece to feel really lived in, you really want to try your hardest to disconnect the person that you are from the person that you have become in order to form the piece. On the flip side of that, if the person is you, it takes you to tell that story. I think what a lot of poets do, they they kind of, they have these kind of generalities that, you know, aren't necessarily coming from lived experiences, but are coming from things that they absorbed from either this poem or this story or this story or this mm. story. And it's not necessarily them. It's not necessarily authentic. Mm. Um, and, you know, you might not even re really recognize that you're doing it, but I think that kind of stems from you not really fully forming exactly who this speaker is it can come off like super preachy if you're getting too you know vague and vast on your ideals and mm. being like this is this is just the thing that it is i'm like how how do you know how is the how do you as the speaker in this poem like you know what i'm not i'm not trying to ask you know all these other references i'm i'm asking this specific speaker and if they got down to the specifics if they got down to the the bones and the flesh that like the they are as a person i think that a lot of times you create something that is much more authentic right, and you don't even need to necessarily explain all of the nuances of the yeah. speaker in the poem but i think you want to kind of have an idea a little bit about them for the moment in momentarily you kind of putting yourself in that space yeah just like you said like it's not something that you're necessarily explaining in your poem or that you would have to necessarily explain in your poem but it's because of the fact that you did that work it's able to be conveyed in your poem if i'm writing a persona piece as a uh a hamster in a laboratory <laughs> like i'm not gonna okay i'm not i'm not a, gonna be able to fully register a hamster in a laboratory but if i do as much requisite work as i can to try to put myself in that headspace kind of feel you know the the hay whatever on the bottom of the the cage mm -hmm. kind of feel like the 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 coldness of like that plastic that covers the the steel wheel uh you know feel the the depth of disparity of the lights turning off in the lab overnight and you not knowing when they would like you can there's so many things that you can really put yourself in the mind of if you really kind of diligently do that work that'll take you from kind of a surface connection with the work that you're doing mm -hmm. to a deeper connection with the work that lends itself to a little bit more authenticity. I think it also helps you give a better understand, get a better understanding of the motivations for your character. Like why are they doing what they're doing in yeah. your story? It also brings to mind, there's an author, I think it's Charles Baxter. He wrote the art of subtext, <clears throat> which is Ooh, actually yeah. more primarily about fiction. It's not, as much focused on poetry but one of the things he's talking about he is even not just about your main characters your protagonists and your and your speaker but also the other characters as well the other characters that are appearing because it's very easy to create these flat characters that when the scene leaves them they kind of it's like they're like robots and when the scene's over they you flip the switch and they just kind of like mm -hmm. just like turn off you know yeah whereas like i think the example he gave was like for instance let's say you have a character who's working in an office and they come into the office one day and one of the side characters not a main character you may only have like a couple scenes but 
the main character walk in, walks in and sees the side character digging a hole in their cubicle. And it's like, what? You know, because it's like a weird thing. But yeah. it shows that the side characters also have their own motivations. They have their own worlds that they're inhabiting, too. Everyone else that's appearing, everyone has their own motivations. You know, and the more that you can make that come to life, I think the more it can make whatever you're working on also come to life, too.